I'm not sure that there's anything to do here or that we'll get out and uh, find anything here in Chisinau in uh, the Republic of Moldova, as I've come to learn. But yeah, we're just uh, walking up this rather, uh, I guess this portion is kind of pedestrian friendly. It's got steps, but we're trying to find our apartment. Uh, so far, I'll say this is probably the least pedestrian friendly country I've ever been to. Uh, out of all the countries I've been to, I would say this is that one. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm even going to make a video here. So if there's more after this, that means we got out and did something and found something uh, worth seeing here. We actually are just kind of passing through Moldova with the intention of ending up uh, along the Black Sea somewhere in Ukraine. So hopefully while we are here uh, for roughly about a week, we will uh, be able to find uh, some stuff to throw on here for you guys. Some different views, hopefully some uh, educational, informational uh, segments for you guys. Well, if you're from Moldova, this is probably a very recognizable site. This is the Chisinau uh, Circus. And this place, to my knowledge, from what I read, was built in the 80s and was uh, a pretty popular thing. I was reading reviews and it seems like a lot of the uh, people who are probably roughly my age now, uh, they would visit this place as children. And I, it seems like there was a lot of really good memories that these people were having, saying like this was a very good memory of their childhood. Uh, but then a lot of people went on to say how, um, unfortunately, the... Uh, area and the building itself has become a bit uh, you know lacking in uh, care being taken of it um, I'm not here to say uh, this that or the other about this country I know that uh, it's labeled as one of the uh, poorest in Europe and uh, you know maybe uh, politics and things aren't uh, the best as they should be here but uh, people did say that this place had um, basically been uh, neglected and that there weren't any shows but I got online and I like coincidentally I feel that this weekend is actually the first weekend that they're having a show in a while so this I'm assuming this guy here he's putting on a show here and there's uh, there's tickets uh, going on sale for noon and at uh, four o'clock it looks like for Saturday and, and Sunday and then the next uh, few weekends after that it looks like there's a show so if that's something you're familiar with and you and I've got this posted in time maybe you can come check it out if you're a, a local and or maybe if you're someone coming to visit, uh, see if they've got a show going because it looks like they've got it. Uh, they've got some uh, productions going again, so that's cool. So we're just kind of heading up this main center uh, road that runs. Actually, it was right near our Airbnbs. We're just still heading towards this park, but we came across this statue. From what I was able to find, it's some type of monument to like a Lenin youth organization or something. I'm really unsure of that and there's a lot of um, people like leaving reviews for it and nobody really has an idea what it is. And one guy was saying before we forget what this was for, if they're gonna leave it up, maybe we should put a placard explaining what it's all about. But if anyone knows, let me know. But yeah, the uh, center of this um, road actually has a, a fairly wide footpath that um, is nice because it, you know, the sidewalk, but the sidewalk's tight and you're really close to the traffic. But if you walk up the center there, it's uh, pretty spacious and uh, I think it's nice, kind of uh, removes you from the traffic a little bit. But yeah, here's this statue as we go along. I'll try to get some different uh, monuments and things as we walk. It's really, like I said, just, it's just the city. So we're just heading this way. As you can see, the zebra kind of takes you into the next chunk like this and then you can walk down the middle there but we're just kind of moving park to park seeing what there is all right update i did start this video off i believe by saying that so far this was the least pedestrian friendly city i've ever been to uh, there has been an improvement as we've moved away uh, from where we are to the city center and uh that hasn't been so bad i think right where we are right now it's actually a pedestrian uh, zone that's um, only allowed cars for deliveries. Yeah, statues. Yeah, it looks like there's some statues here as we go along. I believe those are referred to as the lovers. Ooh. You know anything about those guys? Nope, not other than that. But yeah, we're just moving towards, I believe is this church here in this park. This is this should be the park we are trying to reach. We're almost there. So we'll go find a nice spot and sit down and uh, show you the park. 
All right, so here's the bell tower for the Church of the Nativity here in Chisinau. This is in, I believe it was Cathedral Park. And here's the uh, Orthodox Church here. This is the largest Orthodox Church in, maybe just in Chisinau, possibly in Moldova as well. Um, I just read some information. I'm gonna try to remember it the best I can. There was some, it was lacking in certain areas on certain information, so I'm gonna just kind of regurgitate what I, what I learned and hopefully it makes sense. So it was saying that the church itself was built in the 1830s and that during, excuse me, I'll slow down a little bit so I'm not whipping around so fast on you. During World War II, it was severely damaged. So this is where there's a disconnect for me because then it goes on to say that in the 60s, the bell tower was destroyed by communists. I'm not sure if the bell tower was always separate or after it was after the church itself was bombed in uh, World War II, if it was then uh, built separately. But here's the uh, bell tower. So the bell tower at some point was either uh, rebuilt here separately or was always here separately. But in the 60s, it was destroyed by communists. And then it wasn't actually rebuilt until 1997 when the church itself actually um, had a zinc dome and that cross added in 1997. Up until that point, the um, reconstruction that had taken place on it after it was severely damaged during World War II uh, was mostly to keep it in its original, um, its original architectural form uh, until 1997 when that, uh, those changes were made, that dome and that cross. But I did uh, learn a little factoid. It was Basically, it was blaming a drunk bureaucrat on uh, the possibility that that's how this church ended up with uh, such a large bell there. They were saying that the, there's a possibility, or at least legend says, that uh, that bell was supposed to end up in a town in Russia, I believe. And due to confusion, uh, on the, uh, thanks in part to this bureaucrat, uh, the smaller bell ended up in Russia and the larger bell ended up here. That's the tell, but uh, but yeah, that's a little bit of information about the church here in this park. Uh, the park itself is actually quite enjoyable. There's a lot of people just kind of relaxing on benches and uh, you see just Rachel here is just soaking up some sun and we're just kind of enjoying this uh, warmer, sunnier day today and just kind of checking out some of this different stuff that's in this park. There's uh, different um, sculptures and monuments to people as we walk around. So kind of nice. It's nice that there's a nice warm day today and we're able to get out and get some sun and uh, learn a little bit of uh, information about the area. All right, we're moving from this park to that park over there. There's a, uh, what was it? Who was the guy? Stephen the Great. Stephen the Great statue we want to go check out. But we came across the uh, triumphant arch here. The arch is uh, rather, uh, it's a rather reasonable size in comparison to some of the other Arc de Triumphs that you'll see in Europe, but uh, to uh, each their own, huh? Right, at least this one actually commemorates something and it's not, not just for show or just to have a tourist draw. This one is to celebrate uh, the victory in the, from the Ottoman Empire. It was built in 1840. So their triumph was beating the Ottoman Empire then? Yep. Is that what it was? Yep. Here, I'll just walk under here real quick, get a shot of this flag. Pretty intense uh, columns they've got there. Uh, when was this actually built? 1840. Is that, did you just say that? I sure did. Nice. All right, we just came from the Cathedral uh, Park, and now we are entering into Stephen the Great Park. Sorry about the lighting, he's backlit there. I'm not sure if uh, if he's recording very well, but uh, what's up with this guy? So I was able to find out that he his throne was taken from him by his murderous uncle, but he was actually Classic. right. He was actually to take that back with the help of Vlad III, which is, uh, you may know him as Vlad the Impaler, Vlad Tepish, or Vlad Dracula. Um, but then he reigned for 47 years, which is a really long time for this region in that time. Um, there was the Ottomans fighting, the Hungarians fighting, so there was a lot of turmoil and he kind of held it down for a while. Well, yeah, we're just entering into the park. We're gonna see uh, what kind of views the park has to offer. 
it looks like they've just planted a bunch of bulbs here so it should be uh, nice views uh, throughout the park as you come along here as we move further into uh, into spring and into the summertime but yeah the uh, parks have been pretty nice so far it's nice to get out and to be able to walk around in a little bit of nature the uh, parks do have deciduous and carnivorous uh, trees so there has been uh, not all the trees are bare so that's kind of nice but yeah, we're just moving along. Uh, you can see back there, I was showing you the arch there. Um, it's kind of like a, the city center, I guess you would consider this area we're in. I did notice as uh, I was looking on the map right now when we were heading over here that I, I believe the parliament building's in this park somewhere. So maybe if, uh, or at least in this very close vicinity. So maybe if we come across that, we'll, we'll check that out. Sounds like maybe some, uh, I don't know, I want to I wanna say like local or um, traditional folk music maybe being played over here by this guy. But yeah, we're just kind of cruising along. All right, we just sat for a minute and listened to my man getting down his, what was that, a flute or a, yeah. like a recorder, I guess? Something very, yeah, basic, simple wooden yeah. flute. So if you're out here and you hear the flute, come give my man some love. He's out here jamming the hits. Since I did mention that, I figured I would follow through. So here was the parliament building, I believe. And I'm not sure if I'm correct about this, but I think that that's the like presidency building there, something to that effect. I don't know much about either of them, except they're some type of administration, governmental building, I would assume, but they're just here next to this park. All right, I'm back here in front of the, the Kishnau Circus, which could only mean one thing. We scored tickets. We scored tickets to that sh uh, little circus show here that's going to be going on. Uh, we've been monitoring it online, and uh, there's two shows actually, one at noon and one at uh, 4 o'clock, which this uh, banner actually reflects here. Uh, but we got super curious, and then Rachel told me she'd never been to the circus before, so I was like, we gotta go. Uh, so we got, let's see, we got two tickets. There's, uh, I think there was something like three different price tiers. And we chose some seats in the back because we didn't want to like be in the front and get chosen for some reason. But we got two tickets. This is third row seats 102, 103, 4 o'clock uh, today. And they were 200 each, which comes out to roughly 10 euro. So for 20 euro, we got tickets to the show here at 4 o'clock. And uh, I mean, don't let the grounds fool you, man. It's going on here still. They're trying to get uh, maybe some shows going to maybe get some money pumped back in here. I'm not sure, but I was very pleased to see that after reading about this being such a like old institution in the people's hearts a, as a memory of their childhood that it was actually open and we're able to go check it out. And it's a beautiful, lovely day too. We were gonna go tomorrow when it rains, but we were like, now nah, let's go today because it's literally like our apartments are on the corner. So we're like, let's go check it out. The woman at the ticket office spoke uh, fluent English. She was very helpful, very friendly. So after a bit here, we'll go check it out and we'll give you a little bit of the show if we can. All right, we made our uh, show time. There's the main building there. I uh, was kind of sitting here wondering if the uh, show was gonna be in the main building because it was such a small uh, venue. Uh, it appears it's gonna be in this uh, smaller venue here. So sorry for those of you uh, who are uh, maybe natives that have been inside that large building. Unfortunately, we're going into this smaller building, but that's okay because uh, we bought the ticket, so we're going to take the ride. Uh, we're going to check it out. I, I think it's fun. It, like the dogs were outside in like a little cage, so I think it's going to be like a lot of dog tricks and like a, like maybe acrobatics and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, it is in a little little tiny uh, arena. We did poke our heads in there. They have like popcorn and some uh, basic drinks for sale. I didn't want to record too much. I didn't want to offend anybody. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go in get our seats. Uh, like I said, it's, it's a very uh, very limited seating So it's a real tight little arena. Um, if I can get some footage inside I will uh, if not We'll give you a rundown when we come out. <clears throat> All right, we just left the circus uh, They were very strict about not recording in there like they had a team of goons that were like busting people so fast So I wasn't able to get any uh, footage, but I had a very enjoyable experience. What about yeah. you? I really, it was 100% better than what I was expecting, uh, and my face hurts because I was just smiling and yeah, laughing so much. That's it was good. actually, you know, it was well done, yeah, I yeah, think. Yeah. A lot of effort was put huh. into it, at least for there sure. There was, like, gymnastics, uh, gosh, like... We had dogs going the, backwards. Yeah, oh my gosh, the, the guy had the dog trained backwards to make it look like they were moving in reverse. It was insane. 
um, dudes doing like balancing acts, the uh, women, I'm not sure what it's called, but when they do the gymnastics from the uh, ribbon, they do, did some of that. Uh, there was a lot of dog, um, not a lot of animals in general, but there were, there were only dogs, which, you know, say what you will about that. Uh, they seemed to be well treated. Yeah, and, they, uh, it seemed to be positive behavior, right. reinforcement, they, seem, they were right. getting treats and stuff. So they, they seemed like to they enjoy, them, you yeah, know? they seemed to enjoy what they were doing. Earlier I said the dogs are in a cage, but they're actually in this huge uh, kennel right here. This is a, one big kennel. So uh, they're not being kept in cages. I think I said that <laughs> earlier. But yeah, it was definitely worth checking out for the price. You can't beat it. And if you're here and there's a show going on, especially if you have children, we were, I think there were, we were probably only like one of maybe a handful of uh, maybe just couples who were going for a date. Uh, the rest of the people were with their children. And so. Uh, Which is the best part. The kids. It's yeah, the kids were losing. Is the best. They were losing their freaking stuff, man. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was fun. So it's worth checking out. All right, not much really going on today. We've uh, kind of been chilling. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, we just kind of came here uh, as we passed through Moldova on our way to Ukraine. Uh, I did realize I was complaining <laughs> in the beginning of the video about how uh, uh, unpedestrian friendly it was here. But I realize now that we're walking back to the bus station, we were just on the wrong side of the road. See, there's this nice big path. And when we were coming in, we were on the other side of the road. And there was just absolutely no walking area there. It's like this much dirt on the side of the road as cars are whizzing by you. So that was my fault. <laughs> but uh, anyway, getting back to my point, we're heading to the bus station. We're having a hard time actually getting uh, like a, a really solid answer on whether or not there's a bus from uh, Chisinau to uh, Odessa. So we're going to head over there and uh, see how that goes for us. But uh, yeah, just kind of walking around. There was a bunch of... Uh, like market like shops that look like they had a bunch of home goods back there maybe we'll swing in there on the way back and uh, check that out I'll tell you as we've walked along there's certainly been no shortage of flowers it was uh, International Women's Day a couple days ago too so there was just so many flowers around but plenty of beautiful uh, flower stores as you walk along throughout the city in general we're gonna actually tuck back in and see if we can find one of these markets and see if there's some uh, like night dress or just some different clothes that we've been looking for. Not sure we'll find anything, but uh, it seems a pretty pretty extensive market. Uh, so we'll see. I'm gonna head in there right now. Maybe just kind of leave it running for a bit after I go in here and see what all they've got. But uh, yeah, we're heading in now. All right, I'm trying to not uh, piss anyone off whipping my camera around, but it's pretty much just like, um, what would you call this? Like in America, this would be like a, like a, like a swap meet or something. Yeah, huh? yeah, they've got one in the east side of Mesa. Like a parking swap yeah, or something yeah, like that. Exactly. But basically, there's a bunch of textiles, leathers, a um, bunch of uh, different like home goods. I'd say. There's a lot of formal wear too, like really oh, yeah. fancy dresses, tuxedos. That's for sure, it's like there's different sections. There's like the wedding section, and then there's like the home goods section, but. Yeah, it's kind of, we're just kind of cruising around. It looks like most of these stalls probably take uh, cash. So uh, probably bring some cash if you're wanting to come sort through here and do some shopping. But I think actually when uh, we came from the southern bus station, we walked through another huge uh, market like this too. So there's certainly more than one if you're uh, interested. Check it out. All right, we just popped out of the uh, markets. It was actually, we got kind of deep in there and then couldn't find a way out. We were trapped. But uh, it's worth dipping in there. It's something to do. There's not, uh, well, there isn't a ton of things to do in this uh, in this city. So, you know, it's worth walking around, especially if you enjoy going to like a swap meet or something. Uh, poke your head in there and see how they do it. A lot of the stalls were closed, I'm assuming, uh, maybe because it's the midweek or uh, it's just not uh, a very uh, popping day. It's kind of cold and cloudy, so maybe not a lot of people out uh, shopping. But uh, it's something to do. We're going to head now uh, kind of back into the city center where we were filming in the beginning of the video and uh, see if we can find a little souvenir before we head out to uh, go to Ukraine tomorrow. So we'll see what we can get while we're over there. A little bit of these uh, underpasses that go under the main streets for the pedestrians to cross under. We just grabbed some groceries real quick and we're heading back to our uh, apartment. But I figured as we were walking along, I'd kind of show you as you pass under these uh, underground they have like little bread shops and uh, snack shops different uh, little vendors like 
phone uh, and electronic vendors, just different stuff as you go. And you just kind of pop out on the other side. One thing I'll say that I've noticed as we've walked about, there's a, a ton of um, public transportation. And as far as uh, what I mean by that is there's a ton of buses, uh, a ton of city buses, it seems. There'll be like three or four of them that'll pull up in a row. And I'm not sure if they're all going in the same direction and there's uh, several to accommodate the load or if they're all just uh, coincidentally stopping. Like here at, behind us is a bus stop in front of our apartment. And there'll be like five buses lined up heading all in the same direction pulling up at once taking off all at once uh, so it seems there's uh, plenty of ways to get around within the city probably for a, a decent price i did notice too as we walked along that uh, there's all these uh, like sprinters and, and things of that nature they're all lined up here and as i've gone along i've noticed that people will actually be coming to like pick up small packages so i don't know if these guys are all here acting as like courier services like a DHL or a UPS or a FedEx type of uh, courier service. They're bringing packages from surrounding cities or something. I'm not sure if you know, let me know, but uh, I find that quite curious. These guys have been here every day. So there you go, there's that. A Little bit of this area near our apartment actually. From our apartment I can see this huge building and I'm so curious, it seems uh, such a massive undertaking for a country that uh, is apparently fairly poor. I'm, Kind of curious why they would be erecting such a monstrosity that thing's massive but uh i uh, i totally found this intriguing i don't know that i've seen too many baseball diamonds in europe especially not in eastern europe i find that quite interesting but this uh, just behind us is the apartment building i'm sure you can see there uh this building just here and then just a little bit of the area that uh, we've been staying in. It's kind of nice, actually. There's a nice big green belt here just outside of our apartment. So uh, although we're in the city, there's a bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of nature there just outside the door. But yeah, we, uh, we haven't gotten too much footage. We've kind of just been chilling. And uh, there's not a terrible amount of things to do without uh, going out of town on little t wine tours and stuff. And uh, we... Uh, our intentions weren't to spend a, money, a bunch of money while we were here doing those types of tours, but rather uh, lay low and uh, try to keep our funds um, keep our funds tight while we move towards Ukraine. Uh, while we're on a, a three month leave, actually from Spain, while we reset our Shenzhen. So that's a kind of why you can understand why we're not really doing too much, but kind of just getting an apartment and hanging out and uh, trying to get a little bit of footage as we go along in the areas. But yeah, we're gonna head back into. Uh, the center and uh, see if we can find ourselves a little souvenir and see if we can get some new views as we go along. I'll be honest, we haven't really ventured out much. This is really the basis of our travel since we've been here. I've been right down this main street that comes down from our uh, apartment into the city center here. Uh, it suited us well enough. We've uh, eaten at this restaurant a couple times well it's like a, a fast food or a, like a corporate pizza place but it's been pretty good uh, at least it's moldovan yeah hey it's an original moldovan pizza joint that's right uh that place is called andy's i'll actually stop up here when i see it and uh kind of give you an idea of the place real quick and try to get a shot of these uh zebra list street crossings i think we got lucky let's cross here huh yeah that's a stop bud see so you gotta watch out for these guys like that. Yeah, so it, in light of that uh, gentleman back there, uh, just be a pay attention when you go into these crosswalks. They don't always have the zebra painted on the ground. Maybe that's why that guy was in a big hurry, even though there was big signs on the side of the road. You could actually see in the video there that uh, there, that he was aware it was a, a crosswalk. And he was apologetic. Uh, he did say, you know, I'm sorry, but just be careful, see, because usually the, the zebra is like that. Or in the center over there but it's not always there maybe it's worn off or whatever but just be careful these uh these guys get in a hurry people when they're in their cars especially um they're not paying attention to pedestrians too much so always make sure you make eye contact and kind of be a bit safer maybe than i even was and uh make sure they're gonna come to a stop because that guy got pretty close i know saying earlier there was uh so many flower stands 
I'm not kidding, man. They're everywhere. We're back in the city center, and this whole little uh, run that we're walking down has them everywhere. I'm not sure if it's uh, a seasonal thing. Like, right now, everyone's getting them because it's spring, or if all year round, these guys are out here selling flowers, but certainly is a huge market for that here, it seems. Here's a little point of entry or interest, excuse me, for you history buffs. Just came across the History Museum as we were walking. Actually, Rachel saw the statue of, uh, say it again, Remus and... The Romulus and Rom Remus. Romulus and Remus. And uh, so that, that caught our attention. Unfortunately, they're about to close, so there's no more entry for the day. But uh, we did notice there was a lapidarium over here, and it's pretty cool because there's some megaliths from, like, the second and third... Uh, let's see, it says second and third millennia BC. So quite interesting. Uh, there's a little bit of history even just out here in the courtyard for you to learn about, uh, even if the building is closing for the day. But uh, I'm sure there's quite a bit of uh, information to be gathered here. Actually, on the other side of the building, there was a helicopter and uh, like a, a farming tractor. So just different things that uh, they would have that would have been associated obviously with their history uh, just out in the lawn as well around the museums. So yeah, if you're interested in that, come check it out. Saw a little bit of street art over here. Figured we'd come check it out. We haven't seen too much, uh, too many decent murals, tagging as you usually do here, but not too many uh, full decent murals, but this guy's got a little bit of a, little bit of a wall going here. Pretty good. Looks like yeah. maybe someone went over it a little bit with chalk, but... I forget. Do you remember the name of this character? Uh-uh. Like Easter... I remember they celebrated him in uh, Bulgaria, too. And oh, and they had, like, the masks. Yeah, and it's all furry, and... If we're making any sense and anyone knows what we're talking about, remind yeah. us what that is. Not like a boogeyman type thing, but he's kind of a scare your demons away for spring. Oh, and they something. portray him with masks, and I yeah. think, like, people make a bunch of noise in the streets. Yeah. Something yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. We think that's him. We're not sure. Moving on. Huh, somebody help us out. Oh. Alright, we're just on this uh, fairly nice uh, main street that runs here in the center. And a pretty, uh, pretty pedestrian friendly walkway with a bunch of shops. But uh, show them what we finally found at the, at the gift shop. Well, we got this little guy. And for no other reason than he's just silly and cute and fun and within our budget. And right. We usually, size. yeah, we usually try to get something that's significant to our trip. Um, so we were actually trying to find uh, like a clown since we went to the circus, but we found this guy and it was uh, 95 and we said that was roughly like $5. So decent little uh, clay, um, I guess it's a bell, isn't it? It is. Nice. It is. But yeah, there you go. Uh, an idea of uh, types of souvenirs you can find around here. Like I said, we, we usually try to find something that has a little bit more significance um, like in relation to our trip. But uh, you can't always get what you want, so sometimes you just gotta grab something last minute. But we got a little pig, and uh, that'll always remind us of our time here. But yeah, we're gonna head down this way, and I'll, uh, I'll tell you about uh, this thing before I forget. All right, so, Rachel and I, here, let me show you mine. This little string guy, and Rachel's, I'll spin around and get hers. So this, uh, these symbolize a tradition that begins in the beginning of March, called Martishor, and it is uh, basically in significance of... Um, it, yeah, like a talisman to wish um, health and uh, a strong year for the So the, the wearer of the talisman yeah. will be gifted. Uh, so what you do is, and I, I'm, I'm assuming in order to achieve your uh, one year of good luck, you have to wear the entire... Uh, month of March basically it seemed mm -hmm. yeah yeah and when March is over then you take the string um, and I think I read that some people use put the pins up too but um, really what you do is you take the string and you tie it to a twig on a fruit tree I don't know maybe that passes the that's how the it works and healthy you know oh, that's good juju onto the fruit tree, yeah that's how you uh, get the that's how you seal the deal with your good luck for the rest of the month but these are actually gifted to us by our uh, host at our last Airbnb and she, and she explained that uh, to uh, a bit to us, um, so we had to look it up a bit more, and I'm sure that was a loose uh, understanding uh, if you want to look it up or explain to me better what it is. But yeah, it's kind of a neat little thing that she gave us, and a neat little tradition that not, not only do they celebrate in Romania, but also here in the Republic of Moldova, and I believe uh, several other countries actually in the Balkans, or at least in Eastern Europe. So a uh, little interesting thing that we learned there. And uh, yeah, we're just still heading along. We are, uh, I don't know if... There's too much more to see on our journey here. We're just kind of heading back to our place now. 
Uh, we've got ourselves a little souvenir and we got to catch a bus tomorrow so maybe on the way to the bus tomorrow I'll jump on here and uh, show you a little bit of, of the uh, walk but uh, yeah just enjoying the little uh, pedestrian area here in the city center. Alright I know it's just a pizza joint but I did bring it up earlier so I wanted to follow through on that. This uh, particular chain of restaurants is a, Mod a Moldovan uh, pizza place so this is uh, this brand here Andy's originates here in Moldova but uh, the reason I'm bringing this up I know it's just a pizza joint um, it's, it's hard to find a decent pizza I think in particular parts of Europe maybe in particular parts of the world but uh, these pizzas are decent so uh, you'll notice as you walk around there's a ton of these chains there's like a little uh, they have like a little hot dog stand and they have like the larger restaurants where they have the pizzas um, so yeah, we've, we've eaten there a couple times and our bill was never over like 25 and I'm talking like uh, 25 euro and I'm, ha I'm talking like having several drinks, um, a star, a, like a salad, a main course, dessert. So you can definitely have uh, quite a, get quite filled up for a very reasonable price and they're nice um, like new chain, it's kind of like a chain and it's, so it's, you know, although corporate isn't the best but it, it kind of is in this situation where it's a nice clean uh, restaurant that has a lot of consistency. Um, so that's uh, something to look forward to. Uh, might not be, you know, a fancy restaurant. And I'm sure you probably want to go find another restaurant that's uh, more, um, you know, traditional or something to that effect. But as far as walking around, maybe grabbing a quick bite and saving a little bit of money, uh, this is definitely, I would recommend this place. Uh, check it out if you see one. All right, we're here at the uh, north bus station here in Chisinau and we are headed to Odessa. Uh, so I'm probably going to call an end to this video. Thanks for watching all the way through. I do appreciate your time. Uh, like I said, we didn't have much um, of a plan when we got here. So what you saw was kind of just us getting out and getting some exercise and getting out of the apartment. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the view.